able to show you the happiest side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, and now it's time to talk all about the royal family. And with me, I have Ian Pelham Turner and also Helen Ashard. Hello. 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 Thank it's you very so much. It's so lovely to have you both Thank here. You. Thank you. So, royal photographers. Yes. Commentator. Gosh. I know. Very how exciting. interesting. Very privileged. Gosh. So, it's how did so you both get into it in the first place? Um, Ian is a different age to me, mm. and he's been doing it for longer. That's a polite way of saying it. Absolutely. And he's had fantastic um, opportunities photographing Prince William when he was a, a young young little boy, his first Christmas pictures. Yeah. Um, and that really sprung board him into his royal photography days. Mm -hmm. um, I joined him later on in, uh, in his experience. He's a mere child, you see. Oh, a mere child. Me, just a mere <laughs> child. But um, then from there, there's been fantastic opportunities, oh, great yeah. commissions. So you've got loads to talk about, I'm sure. We yeah. have loads. And how, what was that first experience like for you? The very, the very, the very first time, I, I mean, I've been a, a royal photographer 46 years now. Mm -hmm. So the very first time I ever worked was um, a photograph of Princess Margaret. And she came to my hometown, and I was a young boy, I think I was a young boy, <laughs> um, and I got this great photograph of Princess Margaret. She was opening a, a new bridge going over the Medway Towns in Kent, where mm. I come from. Uh, and the photograph was actually turned into an oil painting, it's still in the Guildhall oh, nice. to this day. And yeah. it really sort of started the passion for me. And I was very lucky that um, I, I became, uh, first of all, a Fleet Street photographer very early in my mm -hmm. career, much earlier than most photographers. And I think that was recognised by the royal family. And the royal family tended in those days to actually try and help springboard young photographers. Oh, nice. And it's part of one of the campaigns we're actually trying to talk to the royal family about at the moment, because mm -hmm. we feel right now that uh, sort of very well-known photographers are being used, mm -hmm. uh, and they could use young photographers to actually spring oh, all their careers. Yeah, mm -hmm. to actually sort of spring all their careers. So when I did William's first uh, baby shots, Christmas baby shots, that really I think gave me the spring. Is that, is that one of the ones? Was that the first one? You That's did? one of the first ones. I mean, the, 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 there's this. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was seven minutes ingrained in my life. In those days, uh, when you did a royal commission, and the, the, these photographs were taken on the 23rd of December 1982. Mm. They were the Christmas photographs to 85 countries. This was the official photograph. No pressure then. <laughs> no pressure at all. I mean, uh, it, 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 it's probably the best diet you could ever possibly imagine. For, for two weeks before, I didn't eat. Oh, you because, because I knew the types mm. of things that could go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and in those days, uh, they would sit down on a, on a sofa like this, and you were pre-warned. You couldn't talk to them in any way, shape or form. You couldn't direct them. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. In any way, shape or form. And as soon as they sat down, there was a lackey with a stopwatch right next to me, and I went the stopwatch. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a ruling in royal uh, circles, which is called the 30-second rule. And the 30-second rule is that no royal event must last over 30 seconds. If it does, it throws out the routine for the rest of the day. Oh dear. So That's very strict, isn't it? It was very, very strict. And for four of the seven minutes, Diana had William's teething ring right in front of her face. Oh, so you couldn't, you couldn't say anything? So I couldn't say anything. <laughs> oh, I couldn't no. say, Mar, would you mind losing this teething ring? Because the most famous oh. woman in this world, I couldn't see her. So in the end, I made a noise like I was dying. And the reality was she turned round, she saw what she was doing, she pulled the teething ring away. William went to grab the teething ring and one sixtieth of a second, I think that, that created probably one of the most iconic photographs of was the of one we William. just saw, wonderful. Yeah. That must have really springboarded your, your career then. It, it created all sorts of things because part of being a royal photographer is dealing with the unexpected. Mm. And this can happen all sorts of times. Um, and after the seven minutes was up, Diana decided that uh, she hadn't finished having her photograph taken. So she picked William up and walked straight towards the camera and left Charles on the city. Oh, <laughs> we don't need him. Oh, that's quite that's a lovely picture, though. So, and, and you can no, see no. the look on his face. <laughs> he, he, you know, being the, the, the future king, 
mm -hmm. likes to feel that he is part and parcel of this project as well. So, uh, you know, I had these sort of wonderful photographs of Diana and William smiling away, mm -hmm. and there's Charles, not the happiest person in this world. So he, th so he then, uh, we, we then watched this tussle happening where he then picks William up from Diana and puts William on his knee, on his tummy, and starts tickling him <laughs> because they're both going for the front page picture. Yeah. Oh, so that's William and the royal laugh. Oh, but yeah. at times, Helena has got a great mm. story as well. About, I've got a few great stories. About things so that can go wrong. About? Oh gosh, what happened, Helena? So uh, this this which is particular time. Which one are you talking about, Ian? <laughs> the, one, the, one, the one I'm talking about <laughs> is when you shook Charles's hand. Oh well, I, actually it was an opportunity in a way. We had a um, fantastic time. It was the Chakravarti Cup, which was years ago, mm. and we were um, photographing um, Prince. Prince of Wales and Prince William and it was there were lots of businesses there and they were coming to shake Charles's hand it was very special um, and there we were and I was sort of edging back edging back trying to take pictures and ended sort of flipping myself into the queue mm -hmm. he actually saw what was happening this is uh, Prince of Wales and, and sort of joined in with a joke and started laughing and shook my hand mm -hmm. and sort of started speaking to me and saying oh nice dress and so it, Ian managed Aww. to capture a lovely lovely picture of me but it, it wasn't supposed to be like that obviously but it was just a Let's fun it was just a fun shot it. yeah so oh, there yeah, we yeah, are definitely. so I've got my so, camera on the shoulder so oh. it's quite a special one for me in a way so, so, yeah, so. I, I think she did it. I it think she did it to get a picture of her with Charles. I've never moments. had a picture with the royal family in my life. Unexpected <laughs> moment. But, um, he had your moments. I'm, I'm waiting to fall in line. I have to say, he was absolutely charming mm. and really good fun. Um, I think sometimes we hear these stories about Charles that he's mm. maybe not quite as um, quite regimented in his way, but he's fantastic with people. Good he's family. a real people person, as yeah. the majority of the royals are, but he's amazing. Chats you know, about everything, mm -hmm. really makes you feel quite special. So I had that moment I wasn't supposed to have, but, um, oh, yeah. when you got in yeah, I was like, I felt like, <laughs> very they well had myself. this most wicked sense of humour. You know, you, mm -hmm. you'd look at the Queen at times and you wouldn't think she's got a wicked sense of humour. Don't ever <laughs> test, don't she, ever test it. You know, there, there's, there's some strange things. We, we were analysing um, the photographs the other day, you know, the, the latest photographs mm -hmm. uh, that have been taken by Jason Bell. Um, and we all noticed the Queen's handbag, which is never photographed. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it, it, it was. Uh, what handbag does she have? Well, we're all trying to find out. Can you photograph it? Can you photograph it? We don't. For, 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 for about 36 hours, I've been commentating on TV stations around the world. Mm -hmm. you know, and we, we're on another TV station, we're doing a breakfast show. And of course, all they wanted to know was not not my experience. It's not who owned the handbag. Who was the, who was the maker of the handbag? For God's sake! So I should know. Six o'clock in the morning after three hours sleep. But anyway, that, that's the top. That's what's the most important thing. That's what the top. That's was the type of thing you're faced with. That's something. Yeah. Crazy. But the the um, because she uses her handbag to very yeah. good effect. She mm -hmm. does. She signals with it. Oh. So she has different signals. Can you do the moves, Helena? <laughs> <laughs> she normally has she normally, she normally have her bag on the table, yes. um, so her staff around her will, will be able to see what she's doing. Um, and if she moves her, I think if she moves her bag left from right. left to right, it means that she's had enough of where she is and yes. who she's speaking oh, that's to. A good plan. I know, isn't that and amazing? She, oh, everyone's going to be looking out for that. <laughs> and if she leaves it on the table. Which is great. She's she's having having she's having no, 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 no. That means she wants to go to the loo. Oh. <laughs> So there's all these signals, and obviously all these sort of the, the people yeah. around her understand these signals. Oh, it's very clever though, very simple. Royal Royal and you both picked up on those Royal things. Secrets. Secrets. Royal Royal see, see. So what else can you tell us on these sort of funny stories, that things that have happened? There, there, there's, some, there's some funny things that happen at times. One of my friends recently, and this just shows the, the wickedness, sense of humour of the Queen. Uh, and one of my friends um, is very high up in, in Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. and he's a consultant um, to one of the main commercial directors to the Queen. And this gentleman loves cars, absolutely adores cars. Uh, and he was with one of his other friends walking around the back of Buckingham Palace one night, as you do. Most of us do that, don't we? And, and they, and they <laughs> pass the garage where all the royal cars are, all the Rolls Royces, mm -hmm. and all the, all the different cars are. Uh, and my friend said, I've always wondered what it's like to sit inside a royal car. 
go inside when they said this guy. I said, go inside, there's, there's no problem. You know, go inside, sit down. So he sat down in this car and, and his friend is you know, from the palace is sort of sat beside him. And the, this headlights come round the corner. Oh no. And, and, and they hit straight on, full face, onto the two of them sat in the car and it was the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> it was the queen come back from somebody, and, and, and she saw, and she waved, she waved at the two of them, and my, my friend said, what do I do? What do I do? Right. So, 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 so the other guy said, wave back. <laughs> I think that's the whole thing about etiquette as well. If the queen actually waves to you, then obviously you can wave back. Oh, you know, wave first. Oh, probably. really? Okay. So we're going to be talking about this invited. after the break. So, so you're going to be sort of teaching us a few of the things that obviously Absolutely. you've witnessed as well, best. and about how you know, because things have changed a lot over the years, and children aren't really the same as they used to be. Unfortunately, not all children, because there are some that are very well behaved and they've been brought up really well, but there's others that could you know do with a bit of changing, and hopefully we'll be able to help the parents tonight, and so, yeah, with some guidance. So do join us after this, and we'll be delving into that after this. Welcome back to the show and now we're going to speak about etiquette and something that we can learn, a few things that we can learn from the royal family. Absolutely. Yeah, let's start with you. What do you have to think? There, there was a case differs? this week of a tremendous faux pas uh, and the Queen was visiting a market in Leicestershire and the lady who was guiding around the market decided to put her hand on the Queen's back and start guiding her around the stalls and that's an absolute no-no. And there was this fam very famous story uh, about uh, the Australian Prime Minister doing the same thing years ago. Mm -hmm. Being a gentleman, really, and he, he was just giving her a guy. <laughs> and the look on the Queen's face was, don't do it again. <laughs> you can always tell when the Queen enjoys something, mm -hmm. and when she only has to give a look. So you know that look, don't you? You know that look. You know, I, I, years ago, a uh, um, very quick story. Um, I have a story for every occasion. In 1977, I was working with the royal family uh, during the uh, Silver Jubilee. Mm. And uh, I, I was asked to uh, work with the Boy Scouts Association of Great Britain. And they were going to do, we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, they were going to do a Guinness Book of Records. And they were cooking the longest sausage in the world to go into the Guinness Book of Records. This was a mile and a half long, it was actually done in troughs in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was done almost like a maze system, up and down lanes. And, and it was this sausage being cooked. So um, my, my role was to take the photograph of the Queen looking at the sausage. Well, mile and a half long. <laughs> so I could see the Queen coming in the bottom end of this almost like this maze system and, and, the, and the sort of the width between the troughs was just about width, you know, hip width and mm -hmm. no more. So I, I, I started sort of, so I thought oh, I'll walk halfway down, photograph the Queen, you know, do it, mm -hmm. then I could walk back. What I hadn't realised was the entrance I'd come in, the Duke of Edinburgh was now walking down mm -hmm. and I was trapped <laughs> between <laughs> the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. And, and, and as, as she was coming up and down the aisle, she was starting to look at me because she realised I was trapped as well and she wasn't in the best humour uh, <laughs> at, at the same time. And as she finally came down the aisle that I was in, I thought the only thing I could do was kneel. It just seemed <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> It just seemed appropriate to kneel down and try and you know, curl my way under this trough. And as she was kind of walking down towards me, she recognised me, but she raised her brolly. And what I thought, that mean? Well, I thought she's either going to hit me or, <laughs> or knight me. I was hoping it was going to be I thought this might be my knighthood. But no, it was, then there was this tremendous <clears throat> as, as, as she walked past. So sometimes you... you, you, you First rule of journalism was always look for your escape routes. Right, before this. <laughs> that Especially leads to the last minute. Yeah. Okay, I mean, what, what the, the, the thing, I mean, the thing about, we're talking about the Queen, actually, um, Your Majesty, mm -hmm. really, not, not the Queenie, um, is, is you should never refer to her as Queen. It's always Your Majesty and then Mom afterwards. Mm -hmm. But in fact, she is not that strict when it comes to faux pas. Mm -hmm. It's normally the journalists and the newspapers mm -hmm. that are the ones that are on, on the attack if they see mm -hmm. anything. But um, there's just small little things with, with etiquette. But I think the funniest thing is it's relating Victorian times to the present mm -hmm. day um, is that when, when eating with, with 
um, the Queen, uh, she obviously, once she's finished eating, everyone that's sat around has to put their forks, knives and forks down. Even if they haven't finished? Yeah. Ooh. But in, in Queen Victoria's day, when she was very young, she never, ever, ever took on board the fact that everyone else had to eat around her. And she used to shove her food down her mouth, you know. And people used to sit down and want to eat their food, but they couldn't actually even start their food because they oh. had to... Because she'd finished food. But it's a difference, Victorian day, mm. no time to the present day. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, it's still it's nice that, you know, there are people that are still to sit down as a family and eat together because <laughs> most of them, a lot of children nowadays don't even sit down with their parents to eat, do they? No. They're not eating as a family. I, know, I think, um, you know, we, we analysed, uh, we, we have a major exhibition at the Athenaeum Hotel in London called mm. The Royal Child. And so we've analysed 150 years of how royal children have been brought up mm. and the tremendous strict regimes that they went under. You know, and, and, and even today, etiquette-wise, um, you would think that Kate wasn't involved in etiquette, but she is. Mm -hmm. If if um, if William is in the room with her, and the Queen comes in, she doesn't curtsy. Whereas if William isn't in the room with her, she always has to curtsy to the Queen. And so there are these etiquette rules that still apply to this day, mm -hmm. as well. You know, the, the, these things you know continue on. Uh, with it and um, uh, ladies like Camilla who I've got tremendous respect for in reality you know, have actually sort of softened this sort of sifting down as well mm -hmm. in things but you, you know you, you can find um, the, the etiquette uh, and, and the upbringing of children in Victorian times was so harsh in Victorian times uh, when uh, Edward the son of Queen Victoria didn't lead up to the expectations they had, they did a thing called phrenology. Prince Albert wanted Edward to speak three languages fluently by the time he was four years old. You know, I, I can't even do it now. No. You know, you know, <laughs> um, 62 years on. Um, wow. And when he didn't do that, they did a thing called phrenology. And phrenology was very, very important at that time. And phrenology was the shaving of the head of the child, four years old. Uh, and they had a, a, a gentleman called George Coombs, who was the top phrenologist at the time. And he looked at the bumps on the skull of mm -hmm. Edward. And he decided from that that Edward was educationally subnormal. So they then, for the next few years, put Edward on this seven hour regime oh each day. So that, you know, everyone thinks that uh, Diana. And, and Charles, or Diana especially, was the moderniser of the royal family, and we don't. When, we, when we've looked at the history of royal children, we, we can see that it was actually the Queen Mother and George VI. Mm -hmm. They actually introduced new methods that had never been done before, and this was yeah, with cruelty. They had a, a lovely upbringing, actually, because Queen Victoria, Victorian times, it was quite a lonely time. They were, mm -hmm. It was a very austere upbringing. I mean, Queen Victoria didn't have any friends, you know, 133 dolls, and they were her friends. So she had a very unhappy upbringing. As a result, her children were also brought up to the same sort of unhappy upbringing. Um, but so it looks Queen all glamorous Mom, from the outside, yeah, doesn't it? Like we don't know but what goes Queen on. Mum and George VI, I mean, they had quite a normal upbringing. In fact, they were brought up in Bruton Street, which, interestingly enough, is a Chinese restaurant mm. there in Piccadilly, <laughs> which is quite funny. Um, but they were brought up a um, re really loving family. Um, mm -hmm. Every morning they used to all have cuddles in the bed. And really it was only when George VI suddenly became king um, by default that things slightly changed. Mm -hmm. But it was, they were really they were brought up so well. And it well. shows you etiquette then came in. Because on, on, up to that time, um, both Elizabeth and Margaret, as two young daughters, would run up and hug their father every morning. Uh, and he would do this thing with sugar with them. Uh, and he would give them a spoonful of sugar each on their hand. Uh, and Margaret used to grab this sugar and put it all in her mouth at the same time. And Elizabeth actually used to sort of put it into different sizes because they were sugar mm -hmm. you know, particles. And then she would, she would have one piece at a time. But on the morning that George VI became king, they were told that from there on in that they couldn't hug him after he'd come back from being king. They had to curtsy to him. Oh gosh, that must have been and nice. that was the new mm. etiquette process. And they practiced their curtsies whilst he was away at the coronation. So that they could actually mm. curtsy to him. 
That must have been hard though to do for them. Imagine they just want yeah. to do one up and do a hundred part. But I think tradition and, and yeah, how they were brought yeah. up, so it became quite normal. Yeah, okay. I think in, in modern times as well, which I think was very is, is a lovely thing, is that um, Zara Phillips um, mm. always every time she sees um, the Queen, she she will always curtsy every single time, mm. which which way I think is really quite charming. Yeah. And she's one stickler with tradition, and she always talks of because she's still fairly young, isn't she, Zara? Mm. She talks about how people, you know, don't carry on the the tradition, and certain people can't curtsy, and really, it's something which is it's a lovely thing. Well, what to do continue. you think can be sort of uh, if I could say copied from maybe the, what the royal family do with their children to like the everyday person? I, 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 I think the re- reality nowadays is that, uh, as we know. Um, William and Kate are bringing George up in a very normal environment. You know, th- there's a lot of misconception, um, you know, a- about George mm. uh, and how he will be brought up as well. Kate is a very normal, wonderful lady. You know, uh, Kate can be seen walking up um, uh, from uh, uh, Kensington or Chelsea you know, with, with, with uh, you know, her shopping bags and a handful of chicken. Uh, <laughs> William loves roast chicken, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so she does normal things. They're yeah. very relaxed, aren't they? They're, they're, they're very, very relaxed. relaxed. Mm-hmm. They're sort of like the old school royals, but we've moved into the sort of more modern world, and they, are, yeah. they, want, they don't want the fact <clears> and... <throat> things around them, they just want to, yeah, yeah. to even be dressed casually, and it's nice, isn't it? It is. I think it it, can relate to them. Yeah, exactly, the relating. We we, we had a, we we were at dinner recently with um, William Kate's next door neighbour at Kensington, Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, both this lady and Kate walked their dogs together, you know, in in the afternoon, and uh, William appeared one day, and she said, oh, have you met William before? (laughs) Yeah. And it was just like, um, so like can we have you have you my house before? Do, do you? <laughs> oh, so these nice. these things happen. I I think uh, the reality is, is, and what we try to sort of explain as well is, we take out the mystery and the misconception mm-hmm. of how raw children are going to be brought up in the future. I think they're going to have a much more normal uh, way of life. It's it 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 still has tradition attached to it. I think the thing that the royal family bring is tremendous hard work. Mm-hmm. They're taught from a very Huge early age work. that that yeah. is their life. Mm-hmm. And that's how they are brought up. And yes, they enjoy things. They in do their a life. huge amount of hard work there yes. for the country. Mm-hmm. They really do so many royal um, outings that they have to do representing. Sometimes they don't get credit for from no. the They, 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 they don't get credit at all. And, and the amount of, um, you know, part of our business is, is analysing tourism. And the amount of money that's brought in mm. in invisible earnings mm. because of the royal family, you know. So, so all, all this talk recently about Charles not paying tax or you know all these tax things. If you analyse that against how many billions that are brought into in. London each year mm, because, because they are of there, them, especially over the last couple of years, everyone's been travelling into London mm. and spending their money, which is great. We need it to continue. Oh, but the royal family is very royal popular family. in other countries. Yeah. 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 It's been so fascinating speaking to both of you. Thank you so much oh, for coming we can on. Tell you so much I more. know. We'll have to have another oh, show sad. on this. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to it. Too many stories. Thank you so so much. Thank you so much. Fascinating. And after the break, we'll also be speaking to Diana Parkinson, who's a counsellor and child behaviour expert to add to tonight's topic so do join us after this.